because you just don't know much about it. Like, this is going to sound like a joke. But my grandfather is part Native American. But I don't know nothing about his history, nor yeah. does my family. So we don't even discuss it. We joke and laugh and say, yeah, that boy has straight hair. But other than that, we don't know anything Are about Are you Puerto it. Rican? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> what, you, what is your nationality? I'm all black. You're all black. All but black. your grandfather is Native, Native American. Native American. Native mm-hmm. American. Okay. And that's exactly what... That's exactly what it is because our history, it was either black, white, black or white. Right. It was no in between. Mm-hmm. So there was so many Native Americans. Like I said, it was always intermixing. 97% of African Americans have Native in their lineage. Let's be honest. Science has always had a favorite story about black people in America. You know it. The textbook version, enslaved Africans brought by ships forced into a land that wasn't theirs. It's a story that begins with tragedy and ends with the concept of resilience. But what if that story is missing a chapter? What if DNA test kits, the kind you buy for fun on a holiday sale, are quietly rewriting everything we've been told about where black Americans actually come from because lately those little ancestry kits have been doing something wild they're glitching not in the day of error sense in the history just got caught lying since people are sending their dna to 23 and me ancestry and my heritage expecting to see african and maybe european roots but thousands of black americans are getting results that say congratulations you're part native american or you've got ancient aboriginal markers that don't fit any current map wait what it has got scientists sweating historians scrambling and the internet on fire because these results don't just show a little intermixing after slavery. They hint at something deeper, maybe even older than Columbus. Here's where it gets crazy. The average African American has about 82% African DNA, around 17% European, and 1% Native American. But that 1% isn't random. It's consistently showing up across regions, from Louisiana to North Carolina, from Oklahoma to Florida. So how's that possible? Does it suggest Black people were already present in America before everyone as natives. In this video, let's break it down and understand what the black DNA results are revealing, which scientists cannot digest. The Black History Archives The European version of history says that right after Europeans began colonizing the Americas, enslaved Africans and native tribes were interacting constantly. Sometimes they were forced together on plantations. Sometimes they escaped together. Sometimes they fought side by side against colonists. But what if it goes back even further than that? There are historical accounts, the kind most historians avoid mentioning, suggesting that African people may have reached the Americas before Columbus. I know that sounds like ancient alien territory, but stick with me. When Columbus arrived in the Caribbean in 1492, he wrote something peculiar in his journal. The local people told him that black men had come from the South and Southeast long before the Europeans. They brought metal tipped spears made from a gold copper alloy called guanin. Spanish metallurgists tested it. Guess what? It was chemically identical to metal alloys from West Africa. And then there's the legend of Mansa Abu Bakr Tutu, the ruler of the Mali Empire, the man who supposedly launched 200 ships into the Atlantic in 1311, chasing the edge of the world. His fleet vanished. Mainstream historians say they sank, but the currents from West Africa flowed directly to South America and the Caribbean. So maybe they didn't sink, maybe they landed. That story sounds wild, but let's be real. Science has made wilder discoveries before. 50 years ago, it laughed at the idea that humans originated in Africa. Now, it's called the out of Africa theory, and it's not just stories anymore. Some African-Americans have DNA markers that seem off the map, small signals, Australasian, Polynesian, even Aboriginal-like segments showing up in the genomes of people with no known link to those regions. Scientists used to dismiss it as statistical noise. Now they're not so sure. In 2015, researchers discovered that some indigenous tribes in the Amazon shared genetic similarities with Aboriginal Australians and Papuans. That's not supposed to happen. Not under the classic Bering Strait Migration Theory. It suggests that more than one group may have reached the Americas long before Columbus, one possibly from Asia, another maybe from Africa or the Pacific. So now, picture this, dark-skinned, curly-haired seafarers crossing oceans thousands of years ago, some landing in South America, some in the Caribbean, some mixing with local tribes. Then centuries later, European colonizers arrive and rewrite the story, turning explorers into slaves and native descendants into foreigners. Take Luzia, the 13,000-year-old skeleton found in Brazil. Her skull looked African, not Asian. 
Anthropologists called her the oldest human in the Americas, until DNA analysis revealed that she belonged to a lineage unlike any known native group today. That lineage vanished or merged, possibly with new arrivals, possibly with the ancestors of African Americans. Here's a reminder to please support us so we can make more videos for you by subscribing to our channel and giving the video a like. We want to build a strong community and we need your support. Let's continue now. Now let's pull back to modern times, to the living rooms where this story is unfolding in real time. Every week, thousands of Black Americans open ancestry results and feel the ground shift beneath them. Some find native roots, Cherokee, Seminole Creek. Some find patterns that don't fit any known database. And every one of those results pokes a hole in the neat narrative science built around race. The most common explanation, the one you'll hear from academics, is that Africans and Native Americans mixed during the colonial era. That's absolutely true. The records are there. Enslaved Africans lived among indigenous people, worked together, fought together, and had families together. The Black Seminoles are living proof, descendants of Africans who allied with Seminole tribes in Florida and resisted U.S. troops for decades. But that's not the full story. Some African Americans are showing native or even aboriginal DNA that can't be traced to 17th or 18th century interactions. It's older, deeper, and scientists can't fully explain it. So what do you do when the data doesn't fit the model? You change the model, or you pretend the data's wrong. Guess which one science usually picks first? It's not that geneticists are lying. It's that science, like history, has a comfort zone and anything that makes Western exploration look less original gets quietly buried. The same thing happened when researchers found traces of African DNA in pre-Viking Icelandic bones. Contamination, they said, then later quietly corrected it to possible African ancestry. If we've learned anything from DNA, it's that the human story is not linear. It's a remix. Every generation samples from the last, crossing, blending, looping back. But when the remix threatens power, the record skips. For African Americans, these discoveries hit harder than just genetics. They touch identity. For centuries, being black in America meant being displaced, belonging everywhere and nowhere. But if even a small part of that ancestry is rooted in the Americas itself, it changes the emotional landscape completely. It says, you didn't just arrive here, you were here. It was your land, and the ones who came later cannot define who you are. That idea has power, and it's why this topic is controversial. Native communities have fought for centuries to preserve their sovereignty and identity. The idea that African Americans might also have indigenous roots complicates everything. Legally, politically, emotionally. And scientists tread carefully because they know history has a way of being weaponized. But here's the twist. Sometimes truth doesn't care about comfort zones. In Oklahoma, researchers found that up to 14% of African Americans carry measurable native ancestry likely due to centuries of shared history among tribes and freed slaves. In Louisiana, that number's even higher among Creole families. In DNA terms, that's not noise, that's legacy. And then there's what nobody expected. The deeper scientists dig into African genomes themselves, the more they find that Africa isn't one genetic category either. West Africans, East Africans, North Africans, genetically, some are closer to Europeans or Asians than to each other. So when African DNA shows up in the Americas before the slave trade, the question becomes less, could Africans have come here? And more, which Africans? And when? Now pause for a second. This isn't about saying every black person in America is secretly native or pre-Columbian. That's not the point. The point is that science keeps discovering things they can't explain. And the default reaction is always to protect the old narrative. Because if that narrative cracks, so does everything built on it. Think about it. The entire story of discovery, colonization, and civilization depends on the idea that Europe brought the world together for the first time. But if Africans and Native Americans were already meeting, trading, or even existing on the same land, that changes who the real pioneers were. And maybe that's why these findings get buried under technical jargon, because it's easier to call it and mix your noise than to admit history might have lied. But people are catching on. Every new ancestry test posted online is like a spark in the dark. A grandmother in Georgia discovers she's 3% indigenous. A family in Texas finds a DNA match in an Afro-Seminole community in Mexico. A man in New York learns his maternal haplogroup matches Caribbean natives, not Africans. These stories travel faster than scientific journals, and they're forcing researchers to pay attention. Even anthropologists are starting to admit the obvious. 
that the so-called pure racial lines used in early genetics were myths. The truth is, humans have been crossing oceans and borders far longer than Western history admits. And yet, for all this revelation, science clings to its old ideas and narrative. It keeps calling African-American DNA complex or unexpected. But maybe it's not unexpected. Maybe it's just inconvenient. Because every discovery that connects Black Americans to this land before 1619 undermines the idea that they're forever outsiders in their own country. So yeah, Black DNA is crashing science, but maybe not because it's wrong. Maybe because it's telling the truth too loudly. It's reminding the world that identity isn't a neat pie chart. It's a storm of stories, some remembered, some erased. And sometimes the erased ones fight their way back through blood, through data, through generations. And here's the part that gives everyone chills. The white population of the United States is migrant and came later than the ancestors of modern day black people in the United States. In other words, the white population, the ancestor of every white American in the United States, was an immigrant at a time when native black Americans already lived in the United States. You see, this changes everything completely. What do you think? Could those 1% native DNA traces actually be the missing proof of something bigger? Do you think this kind of discovery would ever make it into school textbooks? In the comments section below, let us know whether you would like to get your DNA tested to know what percentage of Native American DNA you have. Would you like us to make more videos? If yes, please support us by subscribing to the Black History Archives and clicking the bell icon. You can check out more videos on our channel too.